right, Malt Shop Memories fans, here we are back with another fantastic legend here on All Access Pass From Home. I'm your virtual cruise host, Jason Benner, and thank you for coming back. I mean, a lot of people need no introduction, of course. We wouldn't be doing these if they needed big introductions. This man is certainly no exception. We have Vito Picone of the Elegance. Vito, how are you, sir? Jason, doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to this one. Well, you know, I tell you, it's it's a sad day that we're not there, but, you know, we, I mean, we all wish we could be on the cruise right now or, you know, around this time, but, you know, we got to be safe. We got to be smart. It, it, it doesn't make it any less painful to not be out there, though. Well, the anticipation now makes it greater, So now I really <laughs> can't wait to do it. I got to I got I to ask because I've been asking all our stars. When's the last time you performed on stage? March 9th was the last time we did it. We came off a, uh, a cruise on March 1st. We did one job in New Jersey on the 8th or 9th. And that was it. The, the plug was pulled on everything yeah. for the remainder of the year. Yeah. We were supposed to be in Italy. We had two shows in Italy. We had two cruises out to uh, Alaska. Um, not to mention all the in-between wow. you know, things that we were doing, the theaters. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's heartbreaking you know, to a degree. And, and yet, you know, we, we know, we know it's a reality and we have to deal with it like we've dealt with just about every other disaster over the years. We'll get through it. Amen. We will, you know, and I think that's the, the underlying truth to all of it is that we'll get through it, you yeah. know, by hook or by crook, one way or another, we'll all come out the other side. And, and as many of the stars have said, and I'll have to echo, I think entertainment is going to be just as important, if not more important than ever at that point in time, because People need it, you know. People. Oh, need you can that. see, you can see people now. They're chomping at the bit right now. I mean, they, uh, you know, I, I think people would actually jump on a boat right now if you decided to have the cruise tomorrow. I mean, they're willing to, they're willing to take a chance. I mean, get staying in the house and quarantining and and not seeing anything, uh, it's really after a while it starts to really wear you out. And uh, you know, I think you're starting at that point. You want to, you don't want to do anything. But the, the reality is that we have to do what's right. We have to do, you know, what I guess what we're told to do by the people that we hope are telling us the right thing to do. So, you know, if that means we have to wait till 2021, you know, I'll be a year older, but I'll appreciate it just as much. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Really, what's going to be changed is, as you said, we're a year older, but, you know, the anticipation's grown and we're excited and, and can't wait to get back to it. Uh, if you don't mind, you know, Let's go back a few years. Let's go back to the start of the elegance. Let's go back to you and your friends putting this together. Tell us a little bit about the beginning. What was it like? Why why decide to get together? I know you co-wrote your biggest hit back then. And tell us a little bit about the good old days, if you will. Well, it was, uh, you know, it was in, in its infancy. Don't forget, rock and roll at that point was mm -hmm. not even played on most stations and probably could count on your right hand how many TV stations were playing it. And we had the opportunity to... Uh, to audition live at that time and get an early uh, contract. And uh, when we did Little Star, the Little Star took off immediately. So it was like huge. a whirlwind yeah, huge. You know, situation for us. We really were unprepared to a certain degree, but uh, we, 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 you know, we, we dealt with it and we, uh, we were very, very fortunate. It's, uh, you know, if you really look back, uh, the, we were the second white rock and roll group to have a number one record ever. And, and, and we were only beat by, by a couple of months by Danny and the juniors without the yeah. hop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now, if you look at it, you know, you're talking Bee Gees, Beatles, Four sure, Seasons, yeah. you know, so many other people that have come along and wound up with number one records, but to be the second of all time, you know, shows you how far back we go. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a huge <laughs> feather in the cap though. And you were just, you were just a baby. I mean, you were just a teenager too. It's yeah, not like you yeah. were, a, you know, it's not like you were in your thirties somewhere and knew how to, to process and deal with it. Was the sudden fame and the, the skyrocket success of the group and the song, was it, it was, was it a lot? We were only 16. I was 16. A couple of guys were 17. The oldest had just turned 19. And we found ourselves, you know, traveling all over, you know, from not leaving the neighborhood to being on a plane, going to Hawaii and having, the biggest selling record in the history of the Hawaiian islands at that time, you know, and have the schools closed and all the kids meeting us on the tarmac. It, it, it was a dream. I mean, it was just, a, we were waiting for it to, you know, yeah. to, to, to waiting for us to wake up, but it was real. <laughs> it was reality and the greatest, greatest times of our lives. 
was there was there a part of you that recognized what you guys were onto? Did you think it was a did you think it was a sixty year career at that time, or was it just a let's ride this until it dies and then we'll go be? No, uh, actually, that was it. We, we we were out having fun. Yeah, I don't, we weren't even looking at anything, not even dollars. <laughs> you know, it wasn't it wasn't a matter of uh, how much money we making. Uh, can we buy a limit? Can we buy a <laughs> yeah. you know a, a mansion someplace or anything? We just got on the bus or sort the of plane, went to the next job, enjoyed ourselves, and and just kept on going. You know, you're on a bus with with 25 or 35 people, yeah, all in a similar position, and and couldn't couldn't get better than that. You know, we wound up with a friendships that lasted lasted a lifetime. That's wonderful. Well, I mean, that's a huge testament to. That's a huge reason I should probably say to undoubtedly the success, you know, of, of you guys and the continued success is the relationships you had. And, and uh, you know, I'm assuming there was a trust level and a bond there, as you said, that, you know, makes it easier to, to be legends and makes it easier to continue on. Well, Dion, Dion just mentioned, I, I saw him not too long ago. He just mentioned that just the, the few times that we were together, you know, 60 years ago on a bus left a lifetime of friendship. You know, just yeah. just that short span. Don't forget, before the Beatles came, you know, we 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 only had a few years before they just chopped the legs <laughs> out from under us. You know? <laughs> I think a lot of people have that same memory. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. So I got to ask, how how does a sixteen year old become a great songwriter? I I really don't know. I mean, honestly, I had no formal training vocally or or writing. What I, what I did was we tried to emulate the songs and the sounds of the acts that we were catching on the, on the obscure channels somewhere mm -hmm. on the radio. And of course, again, it was not being played mainstream. So we, we would try to figure that out. And I figured out that there, was, there were two verses and a bridge and then two verses and you were <laughs> out. You know? so, and all you had to do was figure out the poetry of it. Yeah. And then later on, you know, as, as you as you had it written down in, in so many words or less, then you started to sing it and create a melody for it. And then when I created the, metal, the melody, I brought it to the attention to the guys. We put it together and then I would do a lot of the ad living. And that's how Little Star became, uh, you know, uh, the, the way it is. All the whoa, whoa, whoa's and all that stuff yeah. was all instantaneously ad living, you know, while uh, while we were singing the words that we had written down. And uh, I, I, the only training I had musically was, it was a weird thing because I wanted to be a guitar player or a, or a keyboard player or a sax player. In school, they started a program and I was in the fourth grade and they get, handed me the trombone because they said I, would, I was the tallest kid. I could reach the last position in the, you know, in the slide. And I you hated win. that. It's, yeah, yeah, I hated I that. Say, I mean, how win. can you like? Yeah, I mean, I I understand during the big band era, you know, Tommy Dorsey, sure. yeah, Glenn yeah. Miller. But at this point, rock and roll was happening all over. You know, I, like I said a thousand times, you never you never see you you know a couple of girls you know oohing and ahhing over the trombone player. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. You know, so so that was that 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 instrument didn't help me whatsoever. But uh, I and, and as far as singing. Uh, singing became, uh, it, it was, you know, how I learned harmony was very, very strange also. I was a clown in school. I always was a class clown. And I got myself in trouble one day. And as punishment, I was placed in the glee club. And, <laughs> and which was the best thing in the world for me because I, there were like 16 girls and myself. You know, so I yeah. loved I, that like, was the this best thing. This is what I was after the whole time. If I time. knew this, I, if I knew this, I had screwed up five years <laughs> earlier. You know? But, but. But the wind up was that they, this particular teacher who was a, she was a Jamaican woman. She actually broke us down into segments. Uh, it would be the baritones and the tenors and so on and so forth. And she would only work with one of those segments on any given day. And then we never heard the other, the other parts of the, of the chorus until she put us in the study hall one day in the auditorium. And we all started singing the only thing that we knew, the only thing that she taught us. And all of a sudden, you got the feeling that, you know, wait a minute, this is beautiful. The sound yeah. was incredible, you know, and everybody did what they were taught. And when they did it, it came in and it blended so beautifully. I was hooked from that day on. You know, what a cool was memory. A, what a yeah. great, what a great backstory that is. That's a cool yeah. memory. <laughs> I, I love though that you break down the intricate art and skill of songwriting as all you had to do was figure out the poetry of it. 
Like, that's right. There's a million fails, failed or struggling songwriters out there going, well, I, what, what, what? Yeah. It's, not, it's not that easy. Yeah. Uh, well, everybody has to find their own way through amen. the woods. You know, amen to that, amen to that. Uh, so let's let's fast forward a little bit. Obviously, you have you've had you've had a wonderful career. I mean, you know, sixty some odd years of 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 being a legend of sixty some odd years of of success and and con continuation. What is it about the elegant sound that that has carried it so long and kept you? And for, forgive the way I'm phrasing it, but your popularity is still wonderful. You still have so many great fans. Sixty years is a long time to hold someone's attention. What is it about the elegance that's held attention for 60 years? Well, it's like a football team with a quarterback, you know, depending on what he does, the team rolls with it, you know. I, I unknowingly created this particular style of melodic flowing with my mm -hmm. voice. And, uh, you know, later on it was done by boys to men and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, this was 30 years before that. I didn't, I didn't plan it. I was just... When we sing a cappella, you try to fill in as many holes as you possibly can with your voices. And that's what I did. And, and by doing all of that, I literally maybe, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I never thought of that until you just asked this question. But maybe the trombone finally came in, yeah. you know. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it was. All of a sudden, all of that, you know, that, that, that Glenn Miller and Tommy Dorsey yeah. stuff was coming out of my mouth. Wow, I never thought of that, but I, <laughs> but that's what I was doing. I was filling in with 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 my voice, and that became our signature. Yeah, and it also became probably our downfall to a degree too at a, at, a, at a certain time, because every time we signed with another record company, they wanted another little star. Sure. So you know, by that time, the sound had pretty much you know been been you know uh, been played out, mm -hmm. and and yet they wanted to recreate that again. So we would just create another little star. We, I wrote a song called Tiny Cloud. I took the word tiny as opposed to little. I took little. the word cloud as opposed to star. You know, I did a song. I wrote a song called Little Boy Blue, which was the answer and the sequel to Little Star, which the opening line was, little boy blue's not blue no more. He's found his little star. Where are you? He sings no more. Now it's there you are. So, you know, but it was always trying to focus around the yeah. original record. And by the time we really broke away from that, and showed what you know we were capable of doing you know the beatles came like i said and sure. and we had to start all over again and then came the resurgence in 1970 and we have not stopped since we've been busy ever since that day is it a, and again forgive the the bluntness of this question is it interesting is it weird to you in any way that here we are in 2020 and still have a following still booking shows still getting cruises and all? i mean it's it's you, your career is fantastic. It's in your 60 some odd years in. It's that's amazing. With me, it's 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 amazing that I'm still here. Never mind. Yeah, fair enough. Time. Listen, we all have that. But yeah. you know, I mean, I'm just happy to be here. You know, yeah. but uh, you know, but it is it is amazing, and 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 the fact that we worked every week and and we were able to yeah. see and spend time with friends that we grew up with and with the other acts. That's the best part about it. Believe it or not, sure. the camaraderie backstage and. And then, you, you know, you, you actually feel like you're at, a, at a, a social gathering until you put your foot out on that stage. When you walk out of the wings, then the, then the, the energy comes out from the people. Yeah. And now there's a, there's a connection between, between you and the audience, which is a whole other section of love. And it's the greatest, greatest feeling in the world. I love it. it is it, uh, speaking about that connection, is it challenging to not be on stage right now because of that because you know that feeling so intimately and you understand that connection so deeply, it's gotta be hard not to be. I, I, I am not a good person to be with on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am absolutely, absolutely not happy. I mean, I've been doing it since I'm 14 years old. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't know from New Year's unless I'm on a stage. Yeah. I don't know from weekends unless I'm performing somewhere. I don't know from, you know, from That's sitting wonderful. in a house and, you know, and, uh, you know, doing all the things to do, to let the, you know, to get the time, you know, to let the time go by. I mean, right. I can write a hundred thousand songs while I'm here, but yeah. the, the inspiration is, you know, it's, it's not here, not when you're moping around and uh, you can't watch television 24 hours and you can't socialize with anybody. It's just a, it's a very, very strange, strange situation we're in, but we have to do what we have to do. It, it, it's, it's so true. And it's, you know, 
I've no, obviously, I mean, I've not been in the business nearly in long, as long as you have, nor do I have in, in one one millionth of the success you've had, but I feel it. I, I feel it, you know, and, <laughs> I'm not on a stage introducing the elegance. I'm not out there chatting with guests and introducing no. shows and hosting Q and A's. And it's, it's a weird reality. And you, right you, you don't, you don't know what to do. I mean, yeah. if you listen to the scientists or the doctors or both or the politicians, you know, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, <laughs> wear a slipper, don't wear a slipper, stand on one leg, don't stand on one leg. Every time you turn it on, there's something else. You don't know what it's so frustrating. It's, it's real. It's fake. Avoid each other. Don't yeah, avoid yeah, each other. I, yeah, 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 that's <laughs> it. Don't cough on someone. Go cough yeah. on somebody. Yeah. Buy all the toilet paper. That's the only that's thing we it, can Gotta have toy. Gotta have toilet paper. That's it. Oh my God. So shifting gears a little bit from your music career to your acting career, what, at what point did you realize you wanted to be, or you were up to be, or how did it come about that you got into TV and movies? Well, I really, I never wanted to be an actor. I actually still don't. It's just too time consuming. You, know, you yeah. sit around and you can sit around for 13 hours and go and go do something for five seconds and go back and you trailer right. and sit there for another but what had happened was we did a movie a cameo years ago in a movie called joey mm -hmm. and uh when we did this this particular you know this particular scene in this z movie not even a b z i would say <laughs> yeah. you know it wound up on cable like five o'clock in the morning and one day martin scorsese saw it and he was casting well, that's good who films. you'd expect to watch cable at five yeah. o'clock in the morning yeah right, right, right. Martin scorsese. Right. yeah yeah so he he, uh, he had reached out and we actually, I actually read for a couple of parts and the part that he really wanted or he gave me, I couldn't, I didn't want to do it because I was, I had a beard, I had a beard throughout the sixties and uh, even in some of the, and even halfway into the seventies. So he, uh, he had insisted that I shave the beard off because in the movie, you know, you know wise guys don't have facial hair, yeah. you know, so it had to come off and I didn't refuse to take it off. I said, well, I'm not interested. And he was like shocked, you know, you're not interested. You got a yeah. movie, blah, blah. So then why he gave me another part, which was very small, another cameo role, but it turned out to be yeah. the pivotal the pivotal scene in Goodfellas where, yeah. you know, where he says, go home and get your shine box, you know? And yeah. and, and, and Joe Pesci kills Frankie Vincent or Billy yeah, Banks. It, it's the, the bar scene. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, and then <laughs> as it were, you know, he, he called me back, I guess by popular demand, he called me back. 30 years later, yeah. you know. You clearly and, made an impression. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he couldn't wait to call me up, you know. So, but I actually got that part in The Irishman. The Irishman. Because I was called to teach De Niro and Pesci how to speak Sicilian for the movie. Oh, so actually, I worked with them before the before the movie and, uh, and before the sh we started shooting it. And then while I was there, he said, you know, you're going to be on the set anyway. Let me give you a part. And I became the manager of this wise guy restaurant yeah. that, uh, that they used to meet in Philadelphia, in Philly. So that turned out to be pretty good. And I wound up again, you know, at the scene and the, I meet and greet somebody at the door like I did the last time. And they gave me the name of Vito again. So I was <laughs> Vito in both movies. I, I started to feel like Lassie, you know, you see the credits. Yeah. You, know, you see like, you know, like Lassie played by Lassie. Lassie. So yeah. Vito, Vito played by Vito, you know, so. But what it they was didn't another... want to tell you was they wanted to make it simple for you. He just didn't want. <laughs> he, yeah. he knew he knew he didn't want to chat. Yeah. Well, actually, actually, that was not my name in the in Goodfellas. It was that Frankie Vincent couldn't remember yeah. what my name was, and after flubbing it three or four times, he said, "The hell with this. I'm just calling you Vito, and that's it." So I stayed <laughs> Vito, and that was it. But uh, I got that, and I, I, I fortunately we got a chance to do that. Uh, I also did a uh, not, not too long ago. We did a little uh, a documentary. Yeah. With uh, with a group called uh, Straight Straight No Chaser, which mm -hmm. is an incredible a cappella group. Yes, very and, much. So. Uh, you know them, right? And yep. uh, great bunch of guys. And uh, I had just had open heart surgery only only about a week, ten, two two weeks before that. So I dragged myself in. I wanted to definitely do this. Man. I did it with Charlie Thomas of the Drifters and with Lala Brooks of the of the Crystals, and we sang with them. We did Stand by Me and Up on a Roof. Uh, Stand by Me was a little a little above my range. So I literally jumped in the background and sang background with them. And then we all took a, a piece of, we all sang a piece of Up on a Roof. But I just, just was notified maybe a week or so ago that the, that, that particular, uh, that particular uh, um, uh, show now has been, uh, the documentary Definitely. has been uh, nominated. Actually, it's, it's in top tier connect contention for Grammy nomination. 
Wow, that's amazing. So, so it's 62 years later, yeah. we may be up for a Grammy. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> you know, well, listen, I don't want to tell you something you don't know, but keep keep it together. One day you'll be something. One yeah. day you'll be something. Just hang I, in there. That's just got to just got to stay alive long enough. <laughs> just yeah, just got to <laughs> stick it out. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Oh my gosh, that's uh, I could, that's pretty. I might... 20 years ago, I might be up for a streaming award. You never know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I got to ask, have you picked up any, you know, you said if you're not on stage, it drives you crazy. Have you picked up any interesting hobbies or fun hobbies during this this time away? Yeah, well, shredding paper became one of my <laughs> biggest ones. I mean, we've been <laughs> shredding everything in sight, you know, getting rid of some stuff. Uh, we did some stuff in the yard. I completely did the whole yard. We did it. I didn't nice. do it. But, you know, we... we Putting pavers yeah. and barbecues and tiki, you know, tiki <laughs> bars and you know everything out there and you know pretty much that. I am now in contact with the guys. We're going to be doing some rehearsal cool. um, once a week. We're just going to get together casually, sit around a table, and everybody stay you know safe distance, and uh, just keep our chops together. Number one, mm -hmm. and also break in some new material. I mean, we you know just to change the uh, you know change the, uh, the the set a little bit. You know. So, but that's pretty much what I'm doing. Nothing more or less than that. I love, cool. I love to spend time with my grandson and, you know, that's, that's one of my best hobbies. You know, I just. That's cool. I, I got to ask, I love to ask this question. What does your grandson call you? Uh, he calls me grandpa. He calls you grandpa. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not into the poppy and pop pop. And, uh, Everyone's got something different. No, I know. I don't, I'm not. I'm not. In, I'm old. I'm old school. You know. You're old school. I mean, grandpa's good enough for me. You know. I love it. And how old is he? He's he just turned uh, seven years old. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That's the great right age. Too. I have another one now. He's only uh, six weeks old, I believe. Oh wow! Seven Congratulations. Yeah, and he's out in California. That's... My grand, you know, my grandson Michael, and then Luke. So. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, very that's cool. The, Congratulations to the new edition. Thank you, thank you. That's wonderful. Uh, well, you know, family becomes family is always important. Obviously, it doesn't become important. Family is always important. Oh, and it's, yeah. you know, it's it's there is kind of a blessing in some of this. I'm betting you that you're getting time with your grandson that you normally wouldn't get. You know, Ab you're absolutely. Getting, you know, it's given him some time that he normally wouldn't get with grandpa. Yeah, and he's also now. Don't forget that. You know they're not going to class they're yeah. actually doing it uh, you know on the computer so you know he's got he is home it's a little stressful for these these kids unfortunately you know they're not socializing they don't really understand what's happening so i try to fill the void you know try to just you know keep them active and do different things and you know things like that but um, it's it's trying time for everybody right now vito pacone music acting and I icon and legend and world-class grandpa that's that's there it is right there that's and, and possible <laughs> grammy award winner and possible <laughs> grammy <laughs> award winner finally <laughs> well last time we saw you on the malt shop cruise as we were talking about in the virtual voyage you came on with it with a different uh, group of singers now you're actually bringing the elegance uh, right, right. what can what can our malt shop guests expect to see and hope to see with the elegance well, one of the things that I'm always proud of is that we've always been, we've always been told that we are one of the most entertaining groups of that genre. Um, we, we've got a lot of a lot of different things go on in between there. It doesn't take away from the singing, but the, the one-liners are there. The, uh, the, the, the the camaraderie is there. The yeah. the the the, uh, the connection with the audience is there. The sing-along with the people, you know. So we've got enough things going on in the act. That uh, that pretty much, you know, give us give people a, a, a good good piece of entertainment for the time that we're up there, and and that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to it. I understand this time we're going to be given a little longer time, so yeah. once once I get the uh, get the time frame that we're actually doing, I could set up a set list that I know that would be uh, beneficial to you know to uh, the time that we're going to have, and uh, and we're going to do it. We'll do it. So um, I know I know people are very excited, uh, you know, but we were chatting in the virtual voyage. You also are a fan. You get to be a fan as well while you're on this cruise. Uh, you get to see people that, you know, and maybe some that you've looked up to or don't remember so much or haven't or have toured with. I mean, it's got to be kind of fun as an artist as well. I, I, I can't wait to go and sit down in the audience and watch them. The problem I have sometimes is you don't want to 
you don't want to detract from what they are. I mean, you sure. don't forget there are people on the boat that just saw you maybe somewhere. So you know, <laughs> can I take a picture? Can I have an yeah. autograph? Or or I have a cousin that has an aunt who has a niece. You know, <laughs> you know who used to ride ponies. You know, so you know, so all of this here is 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 happening. You know, in the audience while these guys are up there. So I got to find a spot where I can hide. Yeah. It's not ego. It's nothing to do with ego at all. Because I, well, I love fact. the. I love the attention. I love meeting people like that. Yeah. But on the, I don't want to detract from what, what no. the acts are doing on stage. You know? So, That's but respect I want for another entertainer. Absolutely. You know, but I want to yeah. catch them. I want to see them. I don't want to see them from the wings. I want to see them from the, from the fans' perspective. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, you know, and again, I, I like, I say this all the time because I, I just find it to be so true. And Malt Shop is one of those cruises where it rings truest, if you will. There's nothing like hearing the person sing the song that sang the song. I mean, oh, that's yeah. one of my favorite sayings just because it, it's so true that, yeah. you know, I've heard Little Star a million times, but yeah. watching you do Little Star is different than hearing yeah. it on the radio or watching someone pay tribute to it, no matter how good they are. Right. Same thing goes for all the acts. Well, when, when we did when we did the last one, we did it with the, with the leaders of the pack. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was a situation where we, we only did two songs each, an opener yeah. and a closer. <laughs> And by doing that, we had the opportunity to do a little humor in between. Yep. And, you know, you saw Bobby from the great. knockouts. Bobby Bobby is the, one of the funniest people you'll ever meet, yeah. you know, and, and he, he says good morning to me and, I, and I'm laughing for the rest of the day, <laughs> you know. So we, we just had such a great camaraderie, you know, yeah. and Emil, Emil was uh, almost like a straight man, you know. Yeah. So, Which says uh, a lot. If Emil yeah, is a straight it, man, you know what's going down. Yeah. Right, right. So it, we, we had such a great time with that and we got... We did we did quite a few jobs with that. That that was a good a, a good little package, and that worked for us. But this time, you know, it's only fair, and more importantly, I want to do it with the guys and 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 really you know really give the audience a, a good piece of what we yeah. were about to. Well, I, I know that I, I mean it goes without saying that you, malt shoppers are excited. You know, we're we're oh, yeah. everyone loves when we get a a full group or a singer they haven't had before, and like you said, haven't had you, but you only did a couple of songs, and right. it's different to have a whole elegant set. You know, right. that's, that's exciting for folks. Uh, well, before we get out of here, I, I got to ask, do uh, you have any messages, anything you want to say to all the malt shop fans and the, uh, the elegance fans out there? Well, first of all, with the elegant fans, I mean, I've got to thank them for 62 years. I mean, anybody mm -hmm. that hangs on that long with us deserves a good thank you. <laughs> yeah. you <know? laughs> but uh, they've been very loyal. They've been very, very good to us. Uh, we still go out. We still do pretty much, uh, you know, sell our performances. Uh, with or without uh, uh, you know, some supporting acts too. Uh, so it shows that, you know, that they are appreciative of what, we, what we've what we done. They sing every word to the song and that's a great thing. Shows mm -hmm. that they really mean it. And uh, as far as the mall shop people are concerned, you know, we're gonna, it's a little difficult for us from the standpoint of you're getting, you're getting a, a, a completely uh, diversified audience. Mm -hmm. You're getting people who are there to see the 60s, people that are there to see acts from the 70s, People that are there to see single artists, you know. So, you know, they may not be into do up as much as they are into the Four Tops or the Temptations or something like that. Sure. But the fact is that once you start doing it, they start remembering, and then when they start remembering, they start loving it, and then all of a sudden you can see the reaction. I'm looking forward to that. I want to turn these people into friends and fans. I always, I always say I don't have, you know, I don't have fans. I have friends, and and I want to be able to turn them into friends. And, and I hope that they appreciate it. And, uh, and, and I know that last, last time was a great experience. They did exactly that. And I, I thank them for that. And I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. And I don't hide. I don't stay in the cabin. No, you don't. You know? I mean, I'm out. That. Yeah, we're out there. Yep. I mean, we're, we're, we're out there more than, uh, you know, more than the, uh, the puck from the shuffleboard. You know, so, <laughs> you know, so, you know, so you're, you, you know, you're welcome to come up and say hello. Believe me, I would love to meet you personally. And you're fantastic. God bless you all. Please look forward to it. We'd love it. I love that. Vito, what a great message. And uh, and I've got to say, I echo that. You really are. You're very attainable, uh, you know, very approachable. They're very out and about. And I think that's, you know, to your point about the malt shop crowd, people are often there for a specific act or something. But what I think really ties the malt shop crowd together is the love of that era of music. They Absolutely. really, truly have a, have a passionate love for that music. And you are a huge, huge part of that. Yeah. And I know I speak on behalf of Star Vista Live and the Malt Shop fans when I say we're really excited to get you out there in 2021. Beautiful. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And God bless you. Thank you for having me. I, I, I loved every minute of this. This was really fun. And thank you, uh, thank you for making it fun.
Listen, it's our pleasure, and I, I really appreciate you. Any moment I have with uh, someone like you who is a potential Grammy winner, not to mention, uh, <laughs> you know, I got to take full advantage. Uh, to better than, it's better than being a potential Grammy. This is true. Yeah, you could be a, a Grammy. Stick a Grammy to Grammy. Or a Grammy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish you nothing but continued success and have some fun with those grandkids. And I can't wait to see you uh, next you. year. Look to all our Malt Shop fans out there, I uh, really appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in for a catch up with the one and only Vito Bacone of the Elegance. He'll be with us on Malt Shop Memories Cruise 2021. My friends, be safe, be smart, treat each other with kindness and respect. We'll see you soon. Be well. Got it. Mm -hmm.